So, um, who are we? Screen Skills, that's a good place to start. So, Screen Skills is the skills organisation um, for the screen industry. So, we cover TV, film, games, animation, and VFX. And we were set up 25 years ago when the film and TV industry decided to go freelance, decided that their workforce um, should go freelance. And so we were set up to look after, um, to make sure that freelancers um, skilled up um, and to make sure that, um, that, that um, any skills gaps that were in the industry, um, that we were able to run training and to fill those gaps. So that's the background. And now, as I say, we, we also cover animation, VFX and games, but we do a lot more than that. Um, we also um, endorse university courses and college courses, as well as apprenticeship providers. So um, if you are looking, I know there's a few people that are um, career changers and also graduates who might not be studying a screen um, degree, but would like to work in this industry. We also um, accredit apprenticeship providers. Um, so all of that information can be, is on our website and it's industry that, that accredit to see um, if the curriculum has strong links to industry. What's also really, really important on our website is we've got so much careers information. I will be talking about that afterwards, but we've got lots of information. So. Um, for you to start your research and you know putting your CV together, thinking about your career, please do go to our website. We've got lots of information about pathways. Um, bursaries. Now, uh, what's really exciting about our bursaries is that we now, um, uh, final year students are now eligible for bursaries from us. So bursaries can cover anything from course fees, equipment, um, childcare, driving license, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we've got bursaries available until March uh, 2021. But I do encourage you to um, apply for bursaries as soon as you can, because we have a pot of money. And once that the money's been allocated, there's nothing left. So don't wait until March 2021. Um, so yes, we run we run networking events. Um, they they tend to be online. We have so many events on our website. Um, so please do either sign up to our newsletter, follow us on Twitter. Every week, so on Monday, we um, we have a sort of list of the the events that we that we're running that week, and we have you know ten to fifteen events a week. So please, everything from freelancing to particular careers, to mental health. Um, there's really a lot on our, on our website. Um, and we also are running some more events for um, RTS tomorrow and the next day, which I'll mention at the end. And we have some events for digital cities next week. We have a scheme called Trainee Finder, where we place people on film productions and TV drama productions across nine different grades department. Um, so um, location, production, camera, um, uh, lo yeah, location, said hair and makeup, et cetera, et cetera. So this scheme, it's a great scheme. It is paused for this year. So we will be recruiting next year. Normally we recruit every December, but it is paused this year. Um, but we also have a mentoring scheme. So, and that's open until uh, the 16th of November. So we're looking for mentees and we're also looking for mentors. So if there's anyone um, who uh, would like to take part in that scheme, it's um, over 12 months, you will meet um, online uh, four times a year with your mentor or mentee. So all of, all of that information can be found on our website. So that's that screen skills in a nutshell. But yeah, please do sign up to our newsletter and follow us on Twitter. So what are we going to cover today? Understanding yourself. That's a big statement. Um, we're really going to um, 
touch upon that and we do have some we do have some sessions where uh, we do sort of delve into sort of a, a skills audit um, and we go into a bit more detail but today you know we, we will be talking a bit about that but that is really your starting point when you're looking at your CV what is a CV for sounds obvious but actually often it's not CV formats it's a question we get asked all the time and uh, we are going to be talking about that as well um, and what to include in your CV what not to include in your CV this session today is really looking at um, screen so that's sort of the first thing to say um, and um, we so that it, it will be advice about CVs for for the screen industry and then there'll be a summary and next steps so let's get started. So why do you need a CV? Um, so the first thing that a CV does is it's an introduction to you and what you can do. And I think those two words, short and clear, are really important. They really have to be, and that's something I'm gonna say over and over again, that it, it really has to be very concise and clear for the person reading the CV, um, who you are, uh, what you're looking for, and what skills do you have today? And I mean, the screen industry is, it is, it is competitive um, and, and standing out is important. And that's what your CV can help you to do to stand out. And we will talk a bit about those the skills and experience that you have that can help you to stand out that you probably don't realize that you have, but it's, it's important that, you know, your CV really, you know, says something about you um, and what's special about you. And, and that's what it has to, it has to put across as well. So you do need to, to stand out. Um, it's a marketing tool. So again, it's, it's just, uh, being able to, to talk about you, what you can do um, to potential employers. It's also um, a good uh, starting point for you to have an online, online profile. So I would encourage all of you to be on LinkedIn and to have um, a profile on LinkedIn. We do have um, on Screen Skills on our website, we do have um, um, a, a network where you can have an online profile so you can also use that as a way of networking but it's really important that you know people do you know employ, employers do google potential uh, employees and you know online pro platforms like LinkedIn for example um, it's important that it's up to date and it and it does all those things, it's, it really is a good introduction of who you are um, and you know, the skills that you have. So why, why do you even need a CV in the first place? Um, in this industry, a lot of jobs aren't advertised, um, which, which, which can be frustrating, but that means that a big part of uh, looking for a job is um, and you've got, well, it's quite, yeah, a telephone, that's a telephone, by the way, cold calling. So reaching out to people, production companies, um, and making them aware of you and making them want to um, have a call with you, meet you. Um, so that that's, you know, what a CV should do. And that's why you have it. Um, it doesn't, in a, a CV, it has to be short and concise. So it doesn't say, it doesn't have to say everything about you, but it, it has to um, say enough for employer want, uh, to want uh, to find out more about you and who you are. Um, so that again is what a CV does, just to, to make an employer um, aware of you, but also wanting to, to meet you and to um, find out more about um, how you can fit for their, um, their company or the opportunity they have. So in some cases, it will be an interview. It will be an advertised position. There'll be an interview. It could be work shadowing. It could be an internship and et cetera. Um, and 
what's also really, really important and um, is a lot of people, um, a, lot, a lot of line managers, um, they do get a lot of CVs and, you know, they have to crew up very quickly. And at the time when they're getting CVs, they don't always have time to respond, but they do keep CVs on file and all line managers, uh, production managers do that. So um, don't be discouraged if you don't get a reply and just remember that, you know, that's why you're sending the CV to, um, you might hear from that person in a month or three months um, but most likely, if it's a good CV, they will keep you on file until there's a, a, another opportunity. So understanding yourself. So that's, that's the big question. And that's really where you have to start when you're looking to um, put a CV together. So the first question is always, well, what, what job would you like to do? Um, and that's where our website can really help you to answer that question because we have um, lots of information about jobs and especially those entry level jobs um, on our website so you can see uh, every job has a sort of list of, of skills that you need qualifications that you need to do this job and advice about how to how to get the job, especially you know those entry positions. Um, so have a look and see on our website, or talk to people working in the industry about what 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 job is it that you'd like to do. And then you have to answer the question like, well, what skills do you have already? And that's where I think for me, what's really helpful is when you get sort of a a, a big piece of paper and you just start sort of writing all the skills that you have and they could be skills that are, that are linked to the industry or just or work experience that you have or, or things that you do in your free time so if you do um, if you've done any any projects with your friends or if you've got a Saturday job you know that that's all really relevant skills um, that this industry um, is looking for. And I think what's useful about our website is you'll see that some of the jobs, they list things like um, being on time, communication skills, initiative, you know, like, and, and, and they're all skills that you don't necessarily have to uh, learn um, or have doing a job in the screen industry, but you might have picked up doing other projects, other jobs on the side. Um, so what else can you bring to the role? Um, that's, um, that, that is your opportunity to sort of stand out. Um, so it might be that, you know, you speak a language um, and if, you, if you're looking for a job um, in distribution, that's gonna be really useful. You might know a part of the country really well, uh, which is going to be really useful for sort of local productions if that's where they're filming. Um, if you've got a driving license, that's a skill that's really, really necessary, health and safety certificate. So there's, there's lots of things, um, extra things that you might think, well, not, you don't necessarily, um, is listed in the, in the job that's advertised, but will be really, really relevant for the employer when they're um, looking at your CV. And then is, is there a match? Is there a match between all those skills um, that you have and the experience that you have with the job um, that you are um, planning to apply for? And then the big question is, how do you get there? Um, and I think, again, that's how our website can be really, really helpful. Uh, if you're looking, let's say, to be a forerunner in, in TV or film, um, there's lots of advice about websites you can go to, Facebook groups where you can find opportunities, the sort of skills uh, that employers will be looking for, and also just the language. Um, it's confusing about our jobs is there's some jobs that are, are um, there's several different names for them so a floor runner a runner a, a assistant uh, production manager it's but there's it can be a bit confusing um, 
So what's so that's really where you first have to start to think, you know, what job would you like to do? So we've got a mentee code um, at the bottom. And before we go any further, um, it would be really interesting to know. So we've got an idea of your background, but it would be really interesting to know what jobs you are thinking of applying for and you would like to do. So we're going to have, um, we're going to do the mentee again. Uh, so we've got the code at the bottom, 808060. Um, and this time, if you could tell us what job you would like uh, to do, um, we're going to have uh, a three minute break. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to look at some of the jobs that you said. And also, if there's any questions that you have, um, we'll pick those up after the break. So it's a very short break. We're going to have two breaks. They're both very short, just three minutes. Um, I think it's enough time to get a glass of water. Um, so it's 20 past three. So we are going to get back uh, at 3.23. Um, so I'll see you in three minutes and um, please do fill out the job um, and go to menti.com. Right. Hello, everyone. So yeah, three minutes. Three minutes isn't very long. Hopefully you had a chance to have something to drink. So I'm just going to, when George comes back, I will, um, she will share her screen and then we'll have a look and see some of the um, jobs that you posted. A lot of variation, so uh, production, sound mixing design, uh, art department, TV drama, um, TV researcher, goal is line producer for a current researcher stroke runner, amazing. Development, casting, and quite a quite a wide range. There's one here that's getting more acting work. We actually don't, um, we, prim we focus on uh, careers behind the uh, scenes um, and we've got loads of information about that, but nothing about acting, I'm afraid. Um, sports journalism and broadcasting, yep. Uh, screenwriting, loads of different things, okay. <laughs> There's a lot, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. Okay. Okay, that's great. Um, Save these. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I mean, it's any, I, I can see some of them were, were a bit of, some, some of you were quite broad and some was more specific. Um, and I think um, we're going to be sort of talking a bit about that as well, but there's, um, it, I think it's 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 good to to be open minded and to um, look at lots of different roles, um, but at some point you do need to start to be specific, and that's sort of why a lot of people have several um, several CVs. And any questions before we move on? Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a question here. Um, Somebody asked, they've seen that a lot of people are looking to hire those that help aid diversity. Um, so how do you add that uh, into your CV or should it be included in a, specifically in a cover letter? I mean, I would, I would actually, for that one, LinkedIn's probably your better platform. Um, what, what do you think, Kay? Um... So diversity schemes and uh, that, I mean, it's something that you can use in your um, personal statement as well. You could use that, um, you know, make reference to it. Um, I think that's the only place. And then, yeah, your cover letter, because there's no real, really, a, that's a very good question um, in the rest of your CV. Uh, but you're right, there are a lot of schemes. Um, and it is definitely something, and I know it's screen skills. Um, we are running lots of initiatives, so, um, but I would say, yeah, LinkedIn or just your personal statement at the beginning. Okay, um, another question. Uh, how possible is it for someone with no work experience and with a degree from Europe 
to work in the UK media industry? So it's all about well, what 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 skills do you have? What, what what is it? I mean, so from Europe, I'm assuming you might speak some other languages, um, and that's hugely valuable and hugely something that will set you apart from anyone else. Um, you know, working in an international environment as well, but also you know, um, working understanding different markets. So distribution is an obvious one, but also. Um, research you know if you're looking at research position so really don't ignore you know th that is your strength that you've got experience abroad you know that is really where that's going to set you uh, apart from anyone else so this it's not something that you you should just brush aside it's 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 a real it's a real bonus and added value um so um yeah no that's um that's you just have to decide which, uh, which, which way you want to send that CV and connect to. Shall I start the, or we've got another one? one? More, uh, there's one more question about a photo um, in the CV or not. I know that that's a very American thing. Um, we don't tend to see it that much in the screen industry here, uh, but we will be looking at covering letters in a little bit. Great. So CV formats. Um, I'm going to go through this quickly. Uh, so reverse chronological order. Um, so your most recent um, experience should be top um, of your CV. It's a skills CV. So education is not something um, that really should be at the top. Um, as you might see in some other CV formats that you've seen, it's really your skills. So that is what we're looking for. So, you know, the work experience that you have, projects you've worked on, you know, those skills that we are looking for in the industry, um, that should be in the top rather than your, your education. Um, portfolios and showreels. So we don't have time because we only have an hour to talk about portfolios and showreels, but we have, I think we have eight dedicated pages on portfolios on our website. Um, so please, please have a look at, um, a look at that. Um, so we've got lots of information on our website for you to, to look at. So layout. Um, again, we get asked this a lot. Um, just simple and clear and um, avoid templates. Um, I think for most people, um, you know, you're, you would, what I would call sort of early career. So, you know, you've had just one or two jobs or maybe you were just sort of starting out. So I think it should only be no more than one side of an A4, at max two, but if you're really early career, early, you, you don't need to have two sides. And, the, you know, the first, the first bit, the first paragraph in, on, your, on the first side has to be what stands out um, and don't expect that someone's going to turn over and expect there's a second side. So again, yeah, first bits, the, the first half of the sheet. Um, don't, don't expect uh, the reader to, you know, read all the way to the bottom. Um, you know, if you think there's something that's like really unique, you've got spill, skills or experience that, you know, you, you think is really um, fit for that job, it should be in the first half. And most people have different CVs for different roles. Um, so, you know, it could be that, you know, you want to work in children's TV and you've got some experience working, um, uh, working in, in that sector, um, then you, you, you write something that's specific to that. Um, and every, everyone who's looking at a CV, you, you want to, to make it tailored to that person who's going to read it and that job that you're going to go for. And I think when you're starting out, you know, you might be looking at, at, at several different roles and that's where you really need to tweak your CV according to those roles. Keep it very, very simple. Um, you know, fancy fonts or formatting or, 
you know, it, it's, it's really, you just need to get that basic message across. Um, I once had a, a CV where someone put their eye in the top right hand corner and um, I just thought that was just odd. They did stand out, but for all the wrong reasons. Um, so, you know, just keep it really, really simple. Save it as a PDF. Um, so uh, that's just an important tip. And then also with your name and your title. So if people are going to keep your CV on file, which they normally do, um, they need to very quickly, when they're looking at their um, at all the documents, see your name and the and the, the job title that you were going for. So make it easier for them to find you again. Um, we've got quite a lot to cover, so I'm just being as uh, trying, I'm gonna, I just want to make sure that um, we have time to cover everything. So what should you include? Obviously contact details. Um, please don't, I did once send a CV where I had the wrong phone number, um, which was really ridiculous. So just make sure that you've got the right contact uh, details. Personal statement, we are gonna be talking about that. So it's one of the hardest things to write on your CV. So the personal statements at the top of your CV is four or five lines and it really succinctly says um, what experience you have, um, what you're looking for right now and maybe what you aspire, aspire to do. Um, and it's, it's really important that you get that bit right. And I think especially if you don't have that much experience, um, it's a really good opportunity, the personal statement, just to really sort of summarize um, who you are and, and what you're looking for. Um, so we're gonna be talking about that in the next slide. So obviously if you've got any relevant screen experience, that has to be at the top of your CV. You have to say that um, right at the top. Um, we were talking about skills. So if you've got skills, even if it's not related to screen but something um that you know can be valuable so um it could be you know you've organized a friend uh you you've had a job where you're organizing events or you um uh what else can you have done you've worked in um different jobs where you show that you've been, you've had, um, you're good at uh, timekeeping time or like communication skills, being able to talk to people is quite a big skill to have in this industry. A lot of the jobs that you'll be looking at do require a lot of um, people skills and that is something that sort of comes up time and time again. So if you do have those skills, make sure you list them and yeah, any other experience of other work. Um, hobbies, interests and voluntary work, it's, it's again just sort of showing who you are um, and it, it makes it seem more personal and that person reading the CV, they do want to know a little bit about you. Um, so I would always add those and, and be, you know, maybe be specific rather than saying, let's say swimming, you could just say, you know, there's um maybe a club that you're part of or you know you like to do open water swimming or whatever it is but it, it your interest is something that i would include because it just shows people who you are um education again not at the top but you know you should definitely mention it um towards the end um and then gdpr permission just to say that you know you are happy for that person who's looking at your cv to keep it on file um so that's so that's sort of i mean what you what you don't need to include yeah photo so someone asked that you don't need to include a photo um you know, don't include anything that you think is, is really not relevant. So anything that, you know, you think is, is relevant for that role should be on that first page. And I think most people on this call should really be just looking at a CV that's, that's one page. Um, so I mentioned personal statements. So personal statement is that sort of three or four lines where you, you say, you sort of summarize who you are, uh, what you're looking for, 
and and maybe what you aspire to be but maybe you don't know what that is yet and that's it's also something that you use when you're doing sort of a networking event you know if you do meet someone at a networking event and you want to you know quickly say in a very sort of short way you know what is it that you're looking for and and, and how that person might be able to help you so we're, i'm going to give you three minutes again um, to write a personal statement. Um, so just, you know, it just has to be a couple of lines, but just write a couple of lines about what you would put in your personal statement. And then we're going to have a look at examples of personal statements. Um, and then we're going to discuss them. So it is 3.38, so 3.41. Um, we're going to regroup and um, go over those personal statements. So if we come back at 3.41, so three minutes. Right. Right. Hello. Uh, welcome back. Um, so before we go and have a look at some example personal statements, um, George, do we have any? Well, we have lots of questions. <laughs> we do have a lot of questions. Um... There are quite a few questions about a covering letter and the word count, uh, whether there's a suggestion of that, putting a, you should keep it to a limit. Covering letter, um, yeah, again, it should just be one side of an A4. So really don't go longer than that. Um, and, you know, three to four paragraphs. Um, so I wouldn't say necessarily a word count. Um, but just to make sure they keep it to one side of an A4. And then there's questions about sports broadcasting, um, whether we have career maps uh, for live broadcasting. I don't think we do at the moment. Um, no, we don't. No, um, we don't have that. Do they have that on the BBC website? The BBC does have um, quite a few BBC. sports broadcasting jobs and um, they are running uh, Digi Cities in a couple of weeks, I think. So, um, yeah, if you have a, a Google search of Digital Cities BBC and take a look at some of their um, talks on there, they might well have something on sports broadcasting, apprenticeships and um, radio. And there's been a couple of questions about people who've had career breaks um, and how they should reference that on a CV. I've also had career breaks. Um, and how did you reference that on your CV? Um, I simply put uh, 2010, 2011 career break um, and highlighted what my relevant details were for that specific job. I mean, you know, people in this industry, because the work can be all at once and nothing at all, we're quite used to people taking breaks. Um, and if there's anything you've done vol voluntarily uh, during that time that can highlight another personal skill, put that down in the, pers in the um, covering letter. Great. Any more questions? Or should we move on? Let's move on. Okay. All right. So, personal statements: the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so, this is a this is an example of a personal statement. George, do you want to uh, read it out? Um, I'm passionate about film. I especially admire the work of Daniel Alexander, and I want to be a director. I've been directing films since I was at school and everyone loves them. I've completed a film history course and I got a great mark for my final dissertation. I am now ready to start making my own films. So is that a good personal statement? I mean, we would say no. The word passionate is really overused um, and uh, to, I mean, it's good to aspire to be a director, um, but, but this person is not going to go into a director role. Um, 
and it's not clear what their skills are and what role they actually want to um, go into. So this, this personal statement would be you know, considered bad. Um, okay, next one. I am honest, passionate and hardworking and have just finished a general media diploma. I see my next steps as working for a major broadcaster as a TV researcher. Yeah, so um, it's very short. It doesn't say very much about the, the person and who they are. Um, I mean, it's good to, that it, it's sort of, that this person has said that they've just, where they are, they've just finished a diploma. Um, but, but again, um, it doesn't really have a sense, we don't really have a sense of who they are um, and what spe specific job they want to do. Um, and, and I mean, it, it is good, these words, these adjectives like honest, passionate, hardworking, but they really are quite overused and don't, you know, you have, you only have a couple of lines to, to put across um, who you are, where you're going and, and make sure that, you know, you're using um, that to talk about your skills. So there's not enough emphasis on skills on this personal statement. So the next one, um, shall I read this one out? Um, so I completed a media production diploma um, at an institution last year. Since then, I actually struggled to see, okay, sorry. Since then I have done a work experience placement and for the last six months, I've been doing casual work at a kit hire facility at a, a certain studio, which has given me an encyclopedic knowledge of cameras. I'm looking for work as a runner or camera assistant. What do you think, George? So this would be considered as good. I mean, they've um, specified the institution they went to, and uh, they've given an example of some experience they've had in the field. They've used a really long word that uh, I struggled to pronounce when I was trying to rehearse this. Encyclopedic, I'm glad you took that one on. Um, <laughs> they've, shown, <laughs> they've shown a knowledge of specific cameras um, and they, they clearly know the routes in. I mean, with the other two statements, you've got aspirations. They want to work as a TV researcher, they want to work as a director but it really doesn't show a knowledge of the career pathways into the industry. And if you're looking to employ someone, you would, you would like that person to have done some basic research on the routes in. Brilliant. And just for fun, we've got three more. <laughs> uh, okay. Do, do you want to do this one? Yeah. Um, I'm a computing graduate with a serious interest in games development since I did a placement at Playground Games Studio whilst at university I'm sorry, and worked with them on Lego Speed Champions. I am currently working with Creative Pool, developing their interactive website, but I'm looking for work in the games industry. Yes, so this is not, it's not terrible. Um, because they talk about um, a placement they did at university, which is great. Um, uh, and, you know, that they, they, so they have some experience. Um, they've also got experience working on a website. Um, and it's just a shame it doesn't finish off with the sort of specific roles that this person is looking for. So I think it's almost there, this one. It's not bad. But again, that generic games industry, you know, when you do you know, look on our website and you see, um, you know, all the different jobs and departments, you know, like, what is the games industry, you know, that, you know, there are distinct departments you can work in, um, you know, games development, you know, is that person looking at, um, at coding and programming, um, if they are, they're in a job for life because they're in a huge demand. Um, so, yeah, it's not, it's not specific enough. So the next one, shall I read this one out? Uh, experience of video editing, degree in media production, 
very good at grading, can use several programs, looking for work as a TV editor. It's not great, is it? Uh, <laughs> let's be honest, it's not great. It's very, um, so it's very, sh no, it's not great. And it's not personable. Like, you, you know, you want the CV. I mean, it's very sort of factual, but it doesn't, again, there's, there's no personality in this. We don't really know much about them. A degree, where was the degree? There's no specifics in this. Um, and several programs, it's vague, it's not specific. You know, you really, I mean, you need to communicate a lot. It's hard in a couple of sentences, which is why you really need to have several drafts of doing a personal statement because it's, it's not, you're not going to get it in the first go. Like, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but this is, okay, a good basis, but they need to develop this, this personal statement. They really do have all of those skills. They should sell it much better than that because that's what organisations want. It's very skill-based, with just no specific. Definitely. Okay, and then the last one. Uh, you want to do this? Yeah. Um, I've always been good at building and making things and honed some of these skills on a product design course. I have built a range of sets for theatres at the Hazlitt and the Woodville, and I have recently completed a films props course at Northern Film School. I've been working as a floor runner and I am now looking for work in the props or art department. Brilliant. <laughs> It's amazing how much you can come get across in just four lines. I mean, you really feel that you really understand this person's journey, you know, the experience they have, and then what they're looking for. So it really ticks, ticks all our boxes. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully this has given you some sort of insight into that personal statement, which is a really important part of your CV. And that, you know, especially if, if you don't have that much experience. Right, so moving on, because we do have to finish at four o'clock on the dot. So um, I'm going to go as quick as I can. Um, so cold approaches, it's absolutely okay to send cold approaches. And I really encourage you to do that. So if there's a production company or a games company or that, that's looking uh, that you really like and you really like the content that they do, send them a CV. Um, uh, send them an email with your CV attached. Um, and um, another really good advice is just to keep note as to where you've sent your CV. I mean, this is what most of us don't do, but you should do it. Uh, and I know people who have done it. Um, so they just have an Excel spreadsheet where they put the date that they've contacted a company. And what I do encourage you to do is follow up because by, by having a record of where you've sent your CV, it means that you can then in a month's time say, hey, I sent you my CV. Actually, I've got some more experience. I've been doing this and that. Have you got any opportunities? Because even if you don't get a reply, it, it doesn't mean that they're not interested. They're more likely to be very, very busy. And that's why they haven't. And I'm not saying you should um, harass people, but it's absolutely okay in every couple of weeks to send an email just to sort of like, hi, you know, I'm here, this is what I've been up to. Easier to do if you keep a record. Yeah, as I said, don't expect replies, keep it short. So the body of your email, again, it's a bit like the personal statement, you know, a cold approach, you have to be very clear what, what job you're looking for and how you can help them in their um, production um, and exactly why are you emailing. Uh, and, you know, do your research into, into that company, obviously, um, you know, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, you don't confuse companies and, you know, don't, don't do this in a rush because, um, you're more, more than likely to be sending out a lot of emails. So make sure that, you know, you do your research, you take time when you send that email and everyone loves flattery. So if you flatter a company about the content that they're producing, um, that can only be a good thing. And yeah, what you can bring. So applying for a job. So you've got online applications. Um, you know, adapting your CV is really important. The schemes, research. So, you know, uh, uh, for a lot of 
jobs like let's say if you're applying for an apprenticeship you know it is they are competitive positions so often there's a sort of computer sifting so you have to make sure on your cv that you have those key words um, that is relevant to that job so you can do that by just looking at the job description and, and using some of the vocabulary that they're using in the job description in, in your CV to, to get through that computer sifting. Who will read your CV um, or, or application? So that would be line managers, production managers, talent managers, um, you know, have, have, have a think of who you're actually, what the role is of, the, of that person that you're sending a CV to. Um, how much time will they have? Very little, which is why um, you have to, you know, in your personal statement has to be really quite, you know, direct and, and anything that's really important, really relevant has to be in the, the upper half of that A4 uh, page. Uh, you know, what, what is it that they're looking for? Um, so, you know, make it easier for them. Make, you know, um, if you know that they're looking for a particular uh, role or they're looking to crew up, you know, make, make sure that you're um, using the language and, and referring to jobs that, um, that you know that they will be recruiting for. Um, and again, if you don't hear anything back, don't be disheartened, they'll more than likely keep you on file. They won't tell you that, but they will save your CV um, on file. So how to start. Uh, first draft, uh, test it on someone. You're going you're gonna to do quite a few drafts. There's, no one ever gets the first draft right. It's just not possible. Um, and send it. It doesn't have to be someone who necessarily works in the, um, in the sector, but just uh, share it with someone that, that knows you, but just for, so they can like give that feedback as in like, you know, does it make sense? Does it answer those questions of the skills that you have, um, the job that you're looking for? Are you communicating what it is um, that you can do and um, you know, the job that you're actually looking for? Um, and keep doing that, keep testing, keep changing it. Um, you know, it, it will, it, it's really worthwhile doing that um, and ask everyone around you to do that. So you need an action plan, give yourself a date. So when you're going to finish your first draft, otherwise weeks will go by. Um, and then start writing down, as I said, you should start cold calling, but write down a couple of companies, employers that you'd like to send it to. Um, and then make sure that you do. Um, but you know, pace yourself. It's hard. You know, we've all been there. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, some people, they, they just, in a week, they send out hundreds of CVs uh, and, then, and then they're just, uh, or emails, and then they're exhausted. And, um, you know, then it's like a month go by, goes by and they don't do anything. But really be realistic, you know. I would say realistic is, you know, you could send five to 10 CVs a week. That would be amazing. And then maybe you have a week or two off and then you start again, you know, just, um, and like, again, if you, you keep that record, then, um, you know, you can, you can see those, those, e those companies that you want to chase, especially the companies that you really want to work for. I mean, um, also, you can have, um, you know, you can link on, you can find their contact details on their company um, website, but also on LinkedIn. So we've, uh, so final questions. I'm conscious that we don't have that much time. Um, so our website is screenskills.com forward slash careers. Um, we would love to hear your feedback on this session. Um, I know it's a lot to cover in one hour, so we've got the Menti code 8080060. So please do send us your feedback. Um, we'd love to hear it. Just a quick call out to say that we are running some uh, freelancing sessions. Um, so you'll get a chance to um, uh, get your questions answered directly um, by industry professionals. Um, and we have availability on Wednesday. So check out those sessions on Wednesday. And these are part of the RTS uh, Festival. 
next week for digital cities. We've got, if there's anyone that's working in animation and games, we've got an interesting panel um, on that and careers and entries in. We've got a session on mental health, uh, freelancing again, and uh, six basic principles of, um, of uh, getting back on set. Um, so I don't think we've got time for questions. I'm really sorry. We don't, because we have to finish by all. So, um, yeah, so I'm really sorry. But if you have any questions, you can send the team. Um, so me and George work for uh, uh, the careers team at Screen Skills. So if you do send an email to careers at screenskills.com, we'll do our best to answer your question. But as I said, go to the website. We're, we're running lots of sessions um, uh, this week and next week and the weeks to come. So um, please, uh, please sign up to some of those sessions and um, wish you all the best in your, uh, in your career and your job search um, and hope to see you again at one of our other sessions. Thank you so much.